Welcome back to Bailey Wicker Guernsey Shipwrecks. Today we're going to be going out diving on the west coast. So, uh, people that are already subscribed or watched my channels before, they know by the background I'm down Gron Havre, which is a, uh, a, a bay that's enclosed almost all the way around. Um, a very nice place. Uh, oh, we also call it Roos, uh, Roos Headland. And I'm standing outside a pre Martello tower, um, and this is a, a it's called the Martello after Martello in Corsica, which they were based on. Basically, they, they were built to keep the Napoleonic um, army, Napoleon's army, off of our island. Uh, this one's been restored. We, this is a uh, number 11 of 15, but we have actually only got about 13 left. I think number one and number two were dismantled in the early 1900s. Um, we still know where it, it was because the lane that it uh, was situated at is called First Tower Lane. And yeah, 28 degrees, knocking on 29 degrees. Um, fingers crossed this is the first of many dives I'm going to be doing this week. Uh, I've given up my last job after 23 years and I'm going to uh, start a new role doing something completely different. So I'm excited, I've got a week off and I've got uh, some decent weather. So fingers crossed, we'll see how it goes. Just waiting for Phil and Jen. We're going to be going out there somewhere. Not quite sure where. Ready. Little Pooh and Scarpa. Wonder what little presents they've got up there for you. Cottlefish bones, yeah. limpets. Lots of legs, I yeah, spider crab legs. It's about six horsepower going through the uh, through the pump. Yeah. <laughs> There's always people in the way. Tide's on its way off, as you can tell. Before there was a pier.
Roger the cabin boy, it's me. Watcher! How you doing? Yeah, I'm good, mate. And you? Good. String. Where are we going and what are we doing? I reckon we're going backwards on the off lane. Yeah, sounds good. Don't, just don't forget the ending's a bit somber. <laughs> this gets to a bigger drop off or a big up, uprising of rocks? A somewhat big uprising, yeah. Oh, okay, sounds good. Yeah. So we're going to go down that way then? Yeah, yeah we'll go down west and come back in. Beautiful. It's actually really nice out here. Surprising, isn't it? Yeah, very nice. No swell, we've got a force free. Maybe four from the northeast. Yeah, it should be west than this. Should be. It's tide yet. Yeah? yeah, tide's coming up still. Yeah, it'll come up with the tide. What's that for, Phil? Windscreen. Soak the windscreen to something from misting up. Yeah. Really. Precondition it in some cold water. Yeah. Don't trust myself to do it, I'll lose the bucket. <laughs> then I'll be up. Even worse, Jane, you could go over as well. Exactly. Are you ready? Here we go. This is what we call a drift dive. Um, we know there's going to be quite a bit of tide pushing us north. This is called the Huffet backwards. Uh, basically, you want to drop in at the Huffet and head south westerly, which is uh, you're heading out into deeper water. You can come up whenever you want. But this way round, you end up hitting the reef and having to come up shallow. Just waiting for Phil. So Jen's in the water. Where's Phil? Come on, Phil. No Phil? Oh, something. Ah, there's Phil. He's not past. I didn't even see him get in the water. Oh, well, we're ready. Let's go for it. So we've landed on the bottom. The seabed isn't the nicest of seabeds to get flatfish, but you will actually get them here. Um, it's very granularly, uh, 25 mil down to dust, pretty much. So we're not sure if we're going to see any yet, but we are going to drift on to better sand. So this is the sort of stuff we got. As always, Plenty of starfish. Starfish everywhere. Oh, look at this little queenie swimming. Let's see if we can get him on film swimming. It's only a little baby. Come on, you gonna swim? You gonna swim? Let's get his mouth open, ready to swim. Come on. I'm not quite sure if he's gonna swim. Two more seconds before I just chuck you away. Oh, no, oh well, you can go back. Just hope you don't get eaten by the starfish before you grow old. You can see now we're going into somewhere that's a bit more tidal. Um, look at these rifts in the sand. And also the larger stones are giving way to smaller stones now. So getting towards the uh, Huffet uh, and the seabed is getting better. Just wonder if we see any.
improvement now on this seabed. Look at it, it's turning into a small gravel now. This is perfect ground. Weirdly, we've seen nothing yet. We've seen no rays, we haven't seen anything. Oh well, we've always got time. Hopefully we see something. Before we went down, we said that uh, Phil would like a couple of spider crabs for tea. So we decided to pick up one or two. The awkward thing is trying to get these in a bag, especially underwater. Because what they tend to do is stick their legs out like a, a cat trying to get into the bath. They just don't want to go in the bag. You've got to be really fast, otherwise it will get you. It will pinch you. I mean, it doesn't mega hurt, but still, you don't want to be pinched. This drift dive has uh, stepped up a notch now. Going fairly quick, really. Not bad for a drift dive. But we've noticed now the, uh, the tide is starting to move the surface of the uh, sand. And everything that isn't fixed to a rock is now slowly progressing down tide. really hard to pick up on the camera but there's little sand eel that are diving down into the sand for cover you just see a, a glint of silver every so often if we were to spot a fish we need to have really good eagle eyes at the moment and here we go do you know what that is I can tell what it is straight away so I do this with caution it's a marbled electric ray you don't want to be putting your hands under that because it will give you electric shock. Uh. The sand eel are having really hard trouble swimming into the tide. If they're having trouble, I'm definitely going to have trouble. You see how hard it was to spot a fish in this sand. Just think, we're probably swimming over some, we just don't notice. That one was a little bit easier for me because I've seen a little bit of its tail sticking out. But normally them electric rays just have their eyes on little stalks, almost like a crab. That's all you see normally. Oh no, I think this is the end of the line. We're now finally at the Huffe Reef. It might be a quick swim to the surface from here. I wonder how all them starfish got there. Mm, I think the tide probably pushed them there. But this is perfect sand as well, look at this. Ah. Anyway, that's the way it is. We go up and over the top and back down the other side.
Ah, maybe that wasn't the end of the run. Yeah, there's still sand. Let's carry on. Is Jen's got another spider crab ready to go in the bag? Not quite sure how many they wanted. One or two. We've got a selection here. This one looks good with the barnacles on his back. Oh no, he just had Jen. You get in the bag. More of the sand eel. Oh god if you can't see it very well, but when they dive down into the sand, they're like almost like someone's taking a photograph, got little flashes. Take a look at the sand around here. It's moving, it's moving in the tide. Five minutes left and we're going to have to go back up. Oh no, we got one that's bitten the dust. Crabs will eat him. Look at this, you can see it. Look, it's like, a, it's like the wind blowing leaves. tide is starting to stack the sand up now there's actually drop offs on the back of it but I'm sure when the tide turns and goes the other way it probably moves it back the other way in the other direction as well two minutes left let's get back up to the surface
you can't be a decent drift dive. It's wild out west. <laughs> it is wild. And Paul's just about to go back into the boiling cauldron. I've just come off of it now, look, let's just back out. It's almost a completely different sea. Look at that. And look at that. Yeah. 22 to 12, so it just goes to show how much volume of water is coming up here. Squeezing its way through. And that's probably the part where we actually seen the seabed, all the sand on the seabed making rifts. Actually, the sand was standing up an end. It's all good fun. I just know the camera is not going to do it justice. That, that, that tide, that tide line all the way along. Good luck. <laughs> That's one way to remember it. <laughs> well, I, I, I think it was like a multiple assist on wrestling <laughs> two spider crabs into a mesh bag. Yeah. At 25 meters. People <laughs> getting hung up in the bag. Yeah, look at that. Look. Oh, Just see the silhouette of one dropping out. There we go. Team effort. Team effort. I think. A couple of the other spiders. Yeah. That's not a bad mouse. Not often you see them. No, that's uh. Yeah. Yeah, they're nice, nice and fat. A bit of weight for them. Yeah. That's a weird thing with crabs. Did you know they got two penises? Have they? Yeah. Pop, pop the flap open. See them two things down there. Them two. Uh, sorry. Yeah. yeah. Class he's got no no dignity now. Yeah. No, sorry, mate. <laughs> Watch yeah. out. He's coming into. All your, all your manhoods. Yeah. Yeah. All crabs have got them. Ooh. Oh, he almost Ooh, had yeah, you, yeah. mate. I'll tell you what, the young ones feisty. are the feisty suckers. Yeah. yeah. Look at the red coloration on them. That's how you know they're they're getting good. Yeah. But they're nice and red like that. The barnacles on this one. Yeah. He hasn't shed that shell for a while. Decent size. Not good for tea. Yeah. That's tea. That's thanks for the. Uh, the loan of the best <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Chuck I'll put it back in my yeah. pocket just yeah. in case we want to get any more. <laughs> yeah. We wanted lobsters, but you know, to me, those taste just as good. Yeah, that's all these bubbles up here. Yeah. You can see he's about 22 meters ish. And these rifts here are actually the rifts in the sand. And a reef. And a reef, very, yeah. Very, very shortly. Yeah, we're going to be there coming up, coming on it, yeah, yeah. Steps coming up. You yeah. that at two knots. Yeah, that's a jump of uh, two metres there, uh, straight away. I don't like how it says big wave there. <laughs> yeah, we've gone down the side of it. Yeah. Down there, the big one. Yeah, you don't want to hit this one. Nah. These two. You go down a little funnel. Woo. Funnels you and spits you out the top. Well throws you down to the seabed on the other side again. Here we go, just coming into it now. Hence the rocking and rolling everywhere. Amazing the way the tide reacts to an underwater obstacle. Yeah, there he is, he's back, he's gone. Hang on, hang on. Hold on. Yeah, hold on. 
Brace yourself, this is going to be lovely. And we got still got wet through the roof. Is still there, love? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Is, is there a lot of dive gear still there, Jen? It's still there. Good <laughs> <laughs> yeah. job. Like, where's Jen gone? Paul must be coming up. <laughs> 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 we'll have, we'll have to drag him through the door for ladder goes. And if the first time wasn't brutal enough, we're going to go back in again. And the tide is actually stronger. Uh, Paul told me that this isn't as fast as you can do it. We've done that run in about 20 minutes. He's done the run in about four minutes, so you can imagine how much faster it does get. We're not quite on a, uh, a full spring tide yet, but we're not far off of it. Looks like we've skimmed the furthest west of this reef and we've actually gone around it rather than hitting it so I'm actually quite relieved. Just check my air, 60 bar left, well 10 more bar then I'll go up. I lost Jen found. Oh and she's disappeared. Ah look it's a crayfish that's what she was looking at. Phil knows this reef like the back of his hand. He knows he's on the boulder field now, so he's called the dive. You're not going to see much more now. Well, that's, uh, that is the fastest drift dive in the world. <laughs> yeah. I was like, it was, everyone was in fast forward. That was 
Ah, it's all good. So, dead man fingers, yeah. That's when you know you're going into somewhere where there's a bit of tide. Big white dead man's fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Struggling against the tide. That's all good fun. So we're going to head in now and Paul's going to do a mooring or two. So we're heading back up that way. So Paul's going to go down and uh, check this one. Paul's the man that does all the moorings in the bay. Take it you get hassled quite a bit to get all the moorings done, Paul. <laughs> like the high most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> he comes down there with a moustache and some dark glasses on sometimes. <laughs> Did they fall for it? <laughs> He's got it. On the dead boy. So is that a bad one, Paul, or is that not too bad? For the west coast, that's not bad. <laughs> I think she's got a bit of life left in her. <laughs> but maybe not round here. But I think if you head towards Perel, yeah, that's new. Yeah, Perel would be like, yeah, we'll have that. <laughs> Don't throw it away. Look at the pittedness in there. Look, it's even eaten it's into only, it. It's only, um, he reckons it's only two years old. Doesn't look like two years old, but it, yeah, I could believe it. The thing that always amazes me is the threads are still there, they're just edge, edge back. Yeah, they are, yeah, so the, uh, they're, they're a lot bigger now. Yeah. <laughs> you, you want M24, not M16. Wrecked on this day. Thanks for joining us on this dive, and if you made it this far, congratulations. This was a long one for me. I'll catch you on the next tide.